Hi everyone, today I'm going to go over the guided practice and independent practice, practice sections for uh, Savas and Vision Math 2.0 third grades lesson 7.3. This is making bar graphs. Um, I am going to start on page 372 and do 372 and 373. Okay, so this is, a, we, we just went over uh, bar graphs and picture graphs. Uh, seven two also covered picture graphs. I am uh, not making a video on seven two, but uh, I am going to make one here on seven three. They're they're very closely related. Uh, seven two mostly covered how to how to convert the the same type of data here into pictures, and uh, if need be, I will also make a video on that one. But uh, but that. At this point, it's not my plan. I am going to focus here on the bar graphs instead. Um, let's take a quick look at uh, page 372 here because it, uh, it definitely is something we need to look at for the first couple, first three, excuse me, questions over here on page 373. So let's look at this table here. Now, sometimes you'll see this called a table. Sometimes we'll see them called charts. But this here, this is data. That means that is the information that you're being given here. This is important information. It says, Greg made a table to show the amount of money he saved each month from tutoring. Use the data in the table to make a bar graph. Now it says right here, and I always remind you guys, read all of the information on the page, okay? A bar graph can make it easy to compare data. Remember again, comparing data means looking at the differences between uh, different data, okay? So now it says write a, ta a title, use the same title as in the table. That would be right up here. Amount Greg saved each month. That's the same thing that it said up here on our data table. The title of this bar graph is amount Greg saved each month. Choose the scale. Remember the scales over here on the side and decide how many units each grid line will represent. Well, in this case, we are counting by tens with 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So each one of our lines represents 10. Now you will notice that some of these bars, like here for January, they go over a little bit. Same thing over here on March. So for those in those situations, we're going to look at, and if you even need to mark it yourself just to take a, just to remind yourself, uh, those are going to be fives. So really here for January then, and we already know that based on the information up here, we're looking at 25, right? Uh, we're looking at for February 50, for March, we're looking at 65, and for April, we are looking at 40. So each grid line will represent $10. Now let's take a quick look at the, uh, the bottom question here. It says, convince me these. Uh, sometimes we don't go over them, sometimes we do. And this one asks us to write new amounts for how much Greg saved in four other months. Consider the scale. In May, Greg saved blank, June, July, August, etc. Now, for this one, uh, this is going to be something that uh, that you can make up on your own. So, if we're looking at May, now we could go, we could we could attempt to find a pattern, or you can just do what uh, what you think makes sense here. Um, so we could say that. Uh, that in May, um, perhaps he saved something uh, a little bit more than what he did in April. And you might draw something in right here at the 45 mark. Kind of a bad drawing, but you get the point. Uh, June, perhaps it was something about 30 or so. Um, July, maybe it's gone down a little bit. Maybe it's about 35. And then maybe in August, he went back up a little bit. And he was somewhere close to maybe where he was in March with 60. Um, so the amounts are yours, but I do, you know, want to see you guys play around with making these. Because that is the point of this particular lesson is to ensure that you all know how to make your own bar graphs. Okay, so they'll give you the data, though, typically. Now, let's take a look then on page 373. 373. It says, explain why the bar for January ends between 20 and 35. Well, remember every time they say explain, this means they want you to write in words. And for us, that means remember to use complete sentences. And our acronym for that is CAPS. CAPS. 
capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling. If you're going to use a complete sentence here, I want to see all of those things, especially for words that are already on the page. Those should not be misspelled. Explain why the bar for January ends between 20 and 30. Well, let's look at that. Uh, the bar between for uh, the bar between uh, excuse me the bar ends between twenty and thirty for January because January the amount that Greg saved was twenty five so that's what you're gonna write here right you're gonna say um, the or something similar to this the bar ends between twenty and 30 because Greg saved $25 in January. Again, excuse my bad handwriting. It's even it's even worse here when I'm writing on this tablet, so I apologize for that. The bar ends between 20 and 30 because Greg saved $25 in January. Now, suppose Greg saved $35 in May. Between which grid lines would the bar for May end? Well, let's take a look at it. We're looking at this original one here, not the one that we made up down here, but the original one right here. Suppose Greg saved $35 in May. Okay, so let's say he did. Let's say it was $35 down here. So let's actually, let's, let's, let's look down at this one. Let's, let's color that in for $35. Where do we see that line end? Right here between 30 and 40 it'd be right between be right between 30 and 40 so then in this situation would say the line or the bar would end between 30 and 40 and that is because we are counting by tens. Again, look at this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That means that anything in between these would be fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, etc. So that means that if we are here, if this is the one that we drew badly over here, or okay, I drew badly. I can't blame that on you guys. That's all me. Uh, we ended at 35, which was between 30 and 40. How can you tell how much more Greg saved in February than in April? Well, we can look at the totals, right? In this case, again, I'd like to see you write a complete sentence, but I'm going to go ahead and just work out the math for it. Now, in April, it says how much more Greg, how much more Greg saved in April than, excuse me, saved in February than April. Remember, more and than are your hints. That means that we are going to be looking at some, some subtraction, correct? So it says saved more in February than in April. So in February, we have 50, right? And in April, we have 40. So we can do the math, and we can see automatically that there's a difference, right? But the other way that we can look at it is if you actually wanted to describe it based on what you see on the bar graph, if you look at the graph, February ends on 50, April ends on 40. You can see that one is shorter. April is shorter. And you can write that. April is shorter. And actually, really, it would be better if you wrote the bar for April is shorter on the bar graph. Now let's go ahead and move over to this one here. Use the table to complete the bar graph. Again, here's our table. It's a data table. We have our title right up here. We repeat, repeated the title down here. And now we have the information that we need. This is the important information here. Okay, this is number of people signed up for classes. We had six people sign up for chess, 10 sign up for guitar, seven sign up for painting, nine sign up for writing. So for chess, then we are going to look at six. So we're going to go up to where the line goes up to six. And that's going to be where our bar goes. And again, it's not a very straight bar. But there it is. That one's going to go up to six. Now for guitar, we're going to go all the way up to 10. Our scale over here 
goes all the way up to 10 and we're counting by ones. So for guitar, then we're going to go all the way up to the top because 10 people. That is a terrible looking bar right there, isn't it? Good thing this is an art class. So now we have guitars all the way up to 10. Chess is up to six. Painting, we had seven. So it's going to end right here, right? And we're going to look like something like this. Okay. And then for writing, we had nine. So that's going to be right here. You're just going to look for the number on the scale. Draw the bar, color it in. Might even be better if you did it with different colors. I'm just using the same color here. But there you go. That's how that should look. Well, somewhat. If you could draw better bars than I can, then please do. Now, down here in the independent practice section, let's take a quick look at that. Go ahead and ignore the other uh, work at the bottom here. Uh, let's focus right over here on the independent practice section on that section. And let's see if we can we'll make it just a, a bit bigger so we can look at it a little, a little closer. We're going to complete the bar to show the data. Okay. So once again, here's our data table, favorite store for close. That means you want to write that in first, right? Favorite store for close because we need to have our title in there it should be the same title that we see over here and now we're going to look at uh well, well first let's look at our scale at 0 5 10 15 20 25 30, 30 right? so we're counting by fives okay we're counting by fives over here on the scale and let's take a look and that makes sense because we have 5 20 30 and th and 15 and these are all divisible by five these are uh, numbers that work in that same fact family. So counting by fives is going to be our best bet here. So let's look at Deal Mart. Deal Mart is 15. So then for Deal Mart, we're going to have a bar like so. For Jane's, we have 30. So Jane's is going to be all the way up here. Go ahead and draw in a bar there. Kind of a wavy bar for me again. Parker's. That would be 20. Here's where the 20 is right here. We're going to go ahead and draw that one in. And then trends is only five. So here you go. There they are. There they are. We're just going to color them in to make them a little bit easier to see here. But uh, that's where your bar should land. Fairly simple, not too complicated, even though they might look a little complicated when you look at the uh, the data charts and you see that there are tallies and numbers of votes. The good news here, of course, is that your tallies here, these are the tally marks, they line up with the number of votes here. It's a, it's a perfect alignment, so there's no real counting that you have to do over here. You have all the information you need on these data tables right here. Same thing up here. Okay. If you have any questions on these, let me know. And uh, if we need to uh, to do one for uh, 7 2 for the picture graphs, I will do those as well. I cannot guarantee those pictures are going to look great, though, if you make me draw them out. So uh, just let me know if you have questions, and we will go from there. Okay? I'll see you guys later.